What can you say about Her Majesty the Queen? I mean, doing something successfully for seven years is impressive. But 70 years? Do me a favour. This shy, humble woman was thrust into the spotlight at the age of 25. Incredibly, her first prime minister who reported to her as monarch was Winston Churchill. It was 1952 and this young princess was now being briefed on a weekly basis by a giant of British politics and public life, Churchill himself. Britain was still dealing with the economic, military, infrastructural and societal fallout from the Second World War. The country was healing whilst seeking a new role in a changing world. The Queen would become the face of a new post-war Britain. She was the glue that held this country together. What a legacy, what a person. She was a remarkable human being, let's be honest. Prim and proper 1950s Britain edged its way out of rationing and austerity into the swinging 60s. Modern housing developments, the white heat of technology, motorways, new towns, shopping centres, the Beatles and the contraceptive pill. The Queen was on our banknotes for the multiple financial crises of the 1970s, including the winter of discontent and that humiliating moment in 1976 when Britain faced near bankruptcy and had to go with its begging bowl to the International Monetary Fund to borrow billions. The first Prime Minister that really challenged her authority was Mrs Thatcher, who thought she was the Queen too and they were known not to get on. She's been here for the entirety of our relationship with the EU, all 47 years of it. And she was our monarch when full sovereignty was restored to these islands when we completely left on the 1st of January, 2020. She's been the pandemic queen, of course, continuing where possible to perform her litany of daily duties in spite of the COVID restrictions. And she had to mourn the loss of her beloved Philip at the height of the pandemic. You would need a heart of stone and the absence of a pulse not to have been moved by that now famous photograph of her sitting all by herself in Westminster Abbey at her husband's funeral. For me, that image represented the sick inhumanity of the restrictions placed upon our people. Now, I know there were some rumblings about the Queen's handling of Diana and her sad passing whether to lower the flag at Buckingham Palace and whether to show emotion. For the Queen, there was never any confusion. Duty and protocol have been the abiding themes of her reign. And any public criticism at that time was a misunderstanding of those two important principles from which our Queen has never strayed. Duty and protocol. She was sticking to the rules and doing her job. Now, this is important. The Queen is elegant. No one rocks a lime green dress and coat combo quite like Her Majesty. Well done, Zoe, for finding that one. She's got a stunning smile. What can I say? She always has and always will look just like a queen. She really is a born queen. And she's box office too. Around the world, most countries have to muddle along with elected heads of state who are normally clapped out ex-politicians or tired public figures. Normally, you've never heard of them. Well, the person representing the UK is one of the most globally recognised people on the planet. When she visits France, she's not staying at the Sank or any of those other posh hotels, the Paris Ritz. She's in the Elysee Palace. When she goes to Washington, she's not at the Best Western, although I do like a Best Western. She's in the White House. Whilst being resolutely apolitical, she is in her own way a canny political operator, dropping occasional hints about what she thinks. I hope people will do the right thing, she muttered in relation to vaccine take up, deliciously subtle. And when the Scots were in the throes of the referendum campaign, she simply entreated them to consider how they voted very carefully indeed. Talk about an iron hand wrapped in a velvet glove. And that sums her up. Authentic, elegant, discreet, 
All of which is sustained by the quiet, firm and relentless power of her character. Now, you would have hoped that at the tender age of 95, she would be able to enjoy life. But she's had to deal with Prince Harry running off to Hollywood and vilifying both the family and the institution. And what can you say about her so-called favourite son, Andrew? Although I think he may now have lost that title as well. Well, she's handled all of those things in the way that she's handled everything else, with down-to-earth common sense, a steady determination, and a very stoic, very British instinct to keep calm and carry on. And long may she carry on. Let's not have any talk of her passing the baton to Charles. Notwithstanding her recent health issues, the Queen's energy is unabated, and I bet she can't wait to get cracking now that the worst of the pandemic appears to be behind us. In the end, you've got to ask yourself, what does a head of state do? What are are they there for? Well, they represent the nation. And with her humble, no-nonsense, fuss-free commitment, she is the very definition, the epitome of Britishness itself. The Queen personifies our history, our culture and our values, and she leads by example as she listens to her Robert's radio every morning, sat next to her ring heater, eating cornflakes famously stored in Tupperware. Strangely majestic, strangely down to earth. What an impossible mix this woman is. So what is her legacy? Well, she's been a solid figurehead through many crises, including a few wars. And she has been a consistent force at a time when our country and society have changed dramatically, I would argue, largely for the better. Britain is a bold, creative, confident nation, a beacon of diversity and an economic and cultural powerhouse. Britain's great, all on her watch. And I think her legacy is the monarchy itself and its continued existence. In spite of the haters and a couple of numpties in her own family, the royals remain stubbornly popular. And with the international soft diplomatic power that they provide, and with the billions that they bring in in tourism, as well as being an integral part of brand Britain, I honestly believe that this queen leaves the institution in even better health than she found it. Her great achievement is that there is still a royal family. In the wrong hands, they'd be long gone by now. And we'd have some hellish elected president, a former prime minister or a public figure. We might have President Blair, President Nick Clegg, President Lord Sugar, President Maitlis, President Lineker. So be careful what you wish for. Happy Jubilee, ma'am. There are no words. Actually... There are two. Thank you.